What's up? How's it going, everybody? Uh, here comes another off-grid system at you guys. I showed you a little bit when we started beginning it, but uh, off-grid kid and I got this thing all knocked out yesterday, and I came back today and did all the final, fi you know, I, don't know, I try not to say fire around, but I did the final turn on of the system and uh, got everything up and running. We're using the new Mate Outback Mate 3S. Had to do a firmware upgrade on that. Um, but basically, I, everything turned on great. Uh, again, we did another uh, another bank of Simplify uh, lithium iron batteries. Uh, I built this system uh, really to grow as uh, just like the governors that we did. We started with six batteries. Uh, these are the, the five 3.4 kilowatt hours. Um, we got six of them, so it should be a good start. Uh, this house is completely off the grid. Um, and what's exciting is they did uh, ducted mini splits. So it's going to be interesting to see how the heating and cooling works. Uh, this is round one. The next thing that we're going to start here, as soon as we get a little bit better weather, is we're going to put in 24 solar roll 295s. So <clears throat> it's going to be a, a pretty good little system. Uh, the exciting parts for this that we're going to do next also is we're going to put in a wind turbine. We're waiting on midnight to come out for a new one so that we can do the follow me with all the charge controllers. Uh, I think that's really one of the, the best things that we have going with coupling the midnight charge controllers with the Simplify batteries using the follow me mode keeps everything just a little bit more accurate so that way one thing's not fighting the other and uh, they seem to be doing really good on the governor so far. I really didn't utilize follow me on my lead acid batteries um, and after doing it on the governors I jumped back and really uh, rewired all that, put it in and um, I think it's a, a good benefit. Um, but again we kind of just did some of our standard stuff. We got two Outback rating inverters uh, we did the Outback Flexware 1000 DC. This is what we put all of our bus bar inside to combine all of the batteries, um, all the solar, anything that we want to add into it. It just keeps it super clean. I'm going to say that really this system, uh, we'll probably put another three batteries in. Uh, nine batteries is probably about the max that I'd really put back in one of these. Uh, anything bigger than that, I'm going to start building custom uh, custom enclosures for my systems that I do because we just need more space for all the wires for these types of systems. Um, I like the Simplify batteries. Um, I'm going to say that the one thing that you have to be careful of when you guys are putting these in is to leave adequate room to combine these. I've seen a lot of different ways to do it. I think it's great that Midnight's making a combiner that you guys are going to be able to buy off the shelf um, to wire these up. It's going to keep it a lot cleaner. Uh, I'm buying these uh, from Copper Storm Products. These are bus bars that they make. Uh, big heavy duty copper bus bars, so everything should be good on that. So, uh, let's see, I'll take you out and I'll go show you the generator uh, and I'll give you an overview of all the panels that I put on this other wall. Okay, so I'll kind of do the power flow from right to left. Uh, starting on the right hand side, we have the, the DC storage, we have the Simplify 3.4 kilowatt hour batteries. Um, one of the things I like to do is I'm always trying to come up with really cool wire management. And uh, last time I did a lot more vertical gutter with these ones, we went horizontally and we kind of came up with the E and T to support all the wires. Um, I just like to make it look cool also. So that's what uh, all the conduits are about. Everything's grounded internally. This gutter right here, this vertical gutter, this is how we uh, kind of manage all of the extra cable. One of the things with these simplifies is they want all these cab cables identical lengths. So what happens is uh, battery one, two, three, four, five, six is how we numbered everything. Batteries uh, one and four, of course, have the longest cables and it gets shorter as we go down. So what do you do with all this extra cable? I don't want it stuffed inside of my combiner where all my terminals are. So we kind of use these vertical gutters to loop everything together, zip tie it, try to not make a big electromagnet. Um, also being, you know, kind of concerned about induction issues. So. We're, we're learning and try to continually trying to keep that stuff super clean. Uh, right here, again, we have our Flexware 1000 DC. This is an Outback product. Um, everybody knows I like a lot of Outback stuff, and I kind of just feel uh, using the Outback Flexware, even though it's for the, uh, the FXR series, um, I still try to utilize that. It keeps everything kind of the same, and this is kind of my own custom creation inside of it with all the bus bar stuff. You guys probably... I don't have it all ripped apart, but if you go to Instagram, Andrade Designs, I put most of my stuff on there for some reason. You guys can see some of the, the cabling work that we did inside of there. Uh, we got two Midnight Classic charge controllers. 
So I just decided to, uh, under this permit, just put the charge controllers in now. And because it's so much easier to do all of the wiring one time inside of this Flexware, uh, I did all the inputs, outputs for the charge controller. And all I'll have to do is just hook in the PV negative into the charge controller and the positive into the breaker and, and can kind of just continue on when I get to that point. But converting from uh, 48 volts DC to 240 AC, I have two Outback radians. Um, again, I have, uh, I could actually do more production on what these batteries probably could handle, but I'm going to just really detune one of them, um, on the, on the power save, I'm going to make so it really doesn't turn on so I can kind of limit my surge. The reason I have two is really for charging capacity. I didn't want to max one inverter out on the charger. And again, we're going to add more batteries. So it's easy just to put two of them in right now. Um, I've actually had a lot of people asking me on Instagram and some other places, you know, how to, on these off-grid systems that we do, one inverter not being enough for the average house, what do we do to uh, put two of them in? And, and really one of the, <clears throat> the most uh, important things to do is uh, always include a bypass. Um, this, uh, this panel right here is the manual transfer switch. Uh, when you buy a single inverter, it has the red bypass plate in it, but when you jump up to two, um, you have to come up with a way to bypass the system in the event of a failure or if you have to do any service work. So what we've done is we just have a 100 amp manual transfer switch. That's all we'll ever have on this system. Uh, so in the up mode, we're in inverter output. In the bottom, we can bypass and go directly to the generator. And so what that allows us to do is inside of our electrical panels, we'll open up both of these. So you can see in the main inverter one, we have the inverter number one coming in, inverter number two coming in. And then uh, this breaker, the inverter main breaker feeds up and out and down into the manual transfer switch. Over here where we have the main generator panel, this is generator, this is the main generator in, this is 100 amps out to the manual transfer switch, uh, generator into inverter one and two. So what this allows us to do is uh, feed all available power from the generator into the manual transfer switch. In the case that there's an issue, all we have to do is simply walk up and pull the handle down into the generator uh, output mode and run directly off the generator. What the kind of interesting part is, you basically make combiner panels. Uh, you combine the output of your inverters and then you bring the generator in and then split the feeds to both inverters allowing you to kind of bypass the whole system and uh, not have a direct circle or a direct short if you just did one bypass and one not bypass, if that makes sense. So, so that's kind of some of our AC wiring. And uh, give you a pan a bigger view. That's the, uh, the whole AC power wall with the Mate 3 controller that controls everything. Uh, this is my Mate 3S right here, system controller. Uh, this is Outback's new upgraded Mate. I think this all had to do with the Title 21 stuff. They had to, to make a new one to uh, work with this new inverter that's all Title 21, or Rule 21 compliant. So uh, over here in the back corner, they're gonna uh, have all the well pump controls, the, the bladder or the pressure uh, relief thing for the VFD. It's a you know, variable frequency drive pump, so they have constant water pressure and they're gonna mount it to the wall. So this generator is one that the customer had and uh, we're gonna use this for the time being. What we did already was pretty expensive. We're gonna wind up putting a Kohler generator in similar to the governor's. And uh, one of the kind of more interesting parts about this right here with these generators is they don't have like a real clean way to wire them up so what i did is i i put a nema 3 gutter ran all the the feeds out here and i prepped it to do auto start and also a return feed from the inverter so that way we can have power out here off the inverter system in the generator room when we set it all up so i ran it in strutted it put a, a chase bushing on there and then uh, one of the other things i like to do is in these generators because this is technically kind of like a portable transportable generator um, they have the lugs in there that you actually can put the wires through and just tighten them up on bolts but I've seen a lot of problems with those and I prefer just to do uh, direct crimp lugs and then always heat shrink everything I prefer heat shrink over electrical tape uh, it's a lot better connection and gives a little uh, gives a little safety when it comes up through the the system so 
yeah so this is the generator 14k that's going to power the house and charge the batteries up every day uh yes we're going to have some generator runtime but this is what it uh it took to make this project work right now until we get the solar going but uh it's a new construction home completely off the grid and this is going to be a beautiful place so right out over here is where we're going to put the pole mounts the pads are all cleared we just got to cut some trees down and uh, we're going to be good to go so Thanks for watching uh, my, this current off-grid system, and uh, we'll be back.